Hi, this is Jill from WebGirl Enterprises. Welcome to the show. In this episode, I'm going through part two of a traffic building strategy that uses the NextGen Photo Gallery plugin for WordPress. If you missed part one, you can find it by going through my Facebook business page, which is linked here above my head. Welcome back. In part one of this video series, I demonstrated how to use the NextGen Gallery to create a photo album, then we used an FTP program to quickly upload the collection of images, and then we prodded the NextGen Gallery to recognize the new images. Now that we're in part two, I'm going to cover how the images from part one should be treated so that they provide useful information to the search engines like Google in order to increase traffic to your website. You will need to have your FTP username and password again, so make sure you have that. Alright, here we go. Alright, so we're back in the back end of the WebGirl Enterprises website, which is where we did the work in uh, the first video. So we're going to go into the gallery. And just to give us a little bit more room in the screen that I have, I'm actually going to close this across so I'm just looking at the, the various um, icons here. You can still get into the sub menus this way but it just makes it so you have a little bit more room. So now I'm going to go into the galleries that I have. What I did before I started this video was set up the galleries. I basically have two galleries that are pretty much identical. The pictures aren't the same, but this one is a gallery that is just like the one that we did last time at the end of the video one where we just uploaded the videos, or sorry, the pictures really quickly and haven't really done anything to it. So we come into here and you can see that it's just named the, the general thing that we named it. There's no description. It's not linked to anywhere. Um, it has no parent and there's no information really here. There's just the pictures, the name of the file, the size of it, the generic name of the file, that kind of thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is get it to the point where it's like this other gallery that I've set up where it also has pictures in it and stuff like that but I've done a number of things to uh, improve upon them for what the search engines like. Okay so now that we're in here you can see I put in a little bit of a description, it's linked to a page, it ha uh, doesn't have a parent, that's okay. But when you come down here you can see there's a lot of difference. Uh, the pictures are there, they have a different name, they have information filled in here, they have tags, those kind of things. So now I'm going to go through why you should have these various changes between the uh, video, between the pictures you saw in the last one and the pictures you're seeing here and how you can do that. Okay, so we're going to go back to the other gallery as our example. And I'm going to go into here and the first thing that we want to do is uh, rename the files themselves. These files themselves are poorly named. Um, when it comes to the search engines coming around and finding out, figuring out what is in a picture, they depend on a certain amount of information. The file name is one of them, the alt and title text are another, and then the tags, what's also associated with the picture around it. So if it's on a picture, sorry, if the picture is on a page that has a lot of text around it, contextual text to help back up this picture, that helps a lot. So what we're going to do here is just cover the very basics of putting up your photo gallery and optimizing your photos. In a future video we'll go through a little bit more and talk about the front end of the website. So we have here this uh, these files that are named very poorly don't have much description to them. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, switch over to my FTP program here. Okay, so now I'm going to log into where these files are found and they're in your WP content directory under gallery and under either general photo set or nature photographs. So in this case it's the general photo set we're going into. And you can see the names of the files just like they were on the browser side. So I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to rename it. I can't remember what it was exactly. It doesn't matter at this point. I'm going to talk about the naming strategy later. But I'm just going to say this is a uh, big white tree. OK. 
Okay, so now it's got a new name to it. And now I'm going to go back to the browser. And I'm going to tell it to scan folder for new images. And you'll see what happens. So it scans. We come down here. Now we have we have the big white tree, but we also have this sample 5. And if I tried to click on it, it would just go round and round and round because it can't actually find that image anymore. So what we want to do is now that we've renamed it in the background and reloaded it so we can see it, we want to delete this old one. So here we can delete delete images, apply. And now that one is gone. Okay, so you go through that for the rest of the naming of the files, and I'll go through the naming conventions in a little bit. And then the next thing you want to do is clean this up. We had to put dashes into the file name because uh, images don't like to have spaces in them. It's not a good idea to have spaces in your file names. So we clean this up here, and we're going to tell a little bit about this big white tree uh, so that the search engines know what is in the picture. So it looks like a wintry scene with barren trees with no leaves. Deciduous. Is that how you spell it? No. Thank goodness for wintry for spelling checkers. That's great. Now the tags here are tied into your blog posts. So uh, if you want this to, picture to be associated with certain types of blog posts, then you put the tags in here. So I'm going to, for the sake of argument, and to put it onto some things that I already do. I'm just going to do a couple of them to here. And now I'm going to save it. Alright, so it's saved there. Now, where do those things show up? Alright, so this is the blog entry that I targeted with these pictures. So I'm just going to reload it here and then scroll down to the bottom. And here's where the pictures show up by default. There's another picture here because of what I associated in the previous, uh, in the other photo gallery that was already all named and stuff like that. So what you need to do to be able to have it show up there, the important things are to make sure that it has at least two keywords that match in the blog post. I also tested, I also did this, I'm not sure if that has to do with anything, so let's see if it does. Reload the page, scroll down, okay, that's good. So the images themselves, I just unchecked the thing over here that uh, linked it to a page. So over here you can see how up here in the nature photographs, I have nature photographs linked to a page. And it actually comes up in a page like a regular photo gallery. And uh, the way things show up is the things that were configured for there. You click on it, it opens into its own page and you can see here these are the, the the text that was the name of the file and then this is some of the description of the file and from here you can just kinda of go through them sorry my window isn't all that big and you can see the name of the file that I called it and then the alt description that I put on each one of them so there are the basics the absolute basics for search engine optimizing your images that are in your next gen gallery. The third video that I create is going to go through further optimization of these pictures, not necessarily in the back end, but perhaps, and to also discuss some of the specific naming strategy that I suggest for your file names, for your alt and title text, for your tags, and all those kind of things. I'll also discuss some of the things about uh, text limits here and how long these should be and how short they should be for where they show up. This has been Jill Lampy from WebGirl Enterprises and I hope that you'll come and like my business page and get connected me with me there and stay tuned for part three where I talk more about 
optimizing your photo gallery using next-gen gallery on WordPress. Take care. Thank you.